Are we good? Yeah. Are we good now? <laughs> Can you hear me now? Can you hear Clive and I now? <laughs> okay, now. Yes, there we go. Yay, much better. See, we had one more switch we forgot to turn on. Whoops. Whoopsies, there was just so much going on here this afternoon. <laughs> Hello from Dexter, Missouri. Hello, Miss Jerry Lynn. <laughs> Loud and clear. Awesome. I was saying about the horses, the horses that were running past. We have, uh, it's very much horse country around where we are too. Not, not hugely, but there's, well, actually, I guess maybe hugely, but nonetheless, uh, you see them riding through the village every now and again sometimes. Uh, usually it's uh, when the babies are just, you're just trying to get the little ones used to uh, some traffic, you know, some vehicles going past and stuff like that. So, yes, and Clive's very much loving his little scratchy time. <laughs> right, buddy? He's got one little white whisker right here. He's missing a fang or two. Poor old man. Poor old man. We were talking about him being a little old man. He's looking old man. <laughs> all right. Yeah, like I said, he was meowing like crazy all afternoon. So figured get his little time in now. And then maybe he'd go napping. Maybe. <laughs> all right. We're working on blue. Uh, I'll show you what I had started behind me here. I had an idea in my mind, and I have this uh, AccuQuilt cutter. Uh, it's called Studio 2, so it's a big one. Sorry, Clive, no, I know you don't want to go, but you're going to go. And the, um, I guess the cutter I'm using is a parallelogram, a parallel, parallelogram, uh, 3, uh, 11, 16 times 4, uh, 15 slash 16. So I'm not exactly, I think those are the, the measurements of the parallel gear. Anyways, this is what they look like. I'll show you because I've cut a few already. And I try, I broke down, uh, obviously my fabrics to what I could actually get a piece out. Cause I had a lot of two inch strips. I had to take all those out. That wasn't going to be good enough to, to, to cut this. And I've kind of just decided I made it my own little pattern in my mind. You know, I followed the rules for two of them with the bear paw and the, um, the Bargello. So now it's time to, you know, step out like I do with the red and gray. So I'm doing my own thing. So I, I have 25 together with varying tones of um, light blue, medium blue, and dark blue. But I only have a couple of dark blues here. The big reason being that is, in my mind, this is what I have envisioned is that this is like the first row and I'm going to do many rows and this is 25 in a row here I say and this right here is an inch it's an inch of white uh, sashing or whatever in between so this will be the uh, start of the outside where the border is going to go this is the first row this will be the sashing in between then the second row and I'm going to make it in the, uh, the other direction so it looks like little arrows you know what I mean like like as, of, as in a, you know, a bow and arrow or feathers, that sort of thing. Um, and then I'm going to, my idea was to make it from light to dark. So it would transition as it goes across the quilt, adding a little bit more dark, a little bit more mediums, and then so on and so forth. And we're slowly weaving out the lights. So uh, I've cut quite a bit. So I've got a bunch here on the, my new ironing board cover. Does everybody love it? That was a good show yesterday. I loved it. It was good fun. Hello, just one more book, Miss Angie. <laughs> Trying to put your walking foot on your sewing machine? <laughs> oh, really? I hope so. Yeah, I hope, I hope you like it. I hope, I, hope, I hope you're having fun with the blue. So there's 25, and that ends up being about 72 inches. Uh, that's if I do the little trimming right across here at the bottom and the trimming at the top, it ends up being about 72. So when I added the white strip, I just made sure I covered both ends because I'm obviously going to even them up before I add the rows together to make, hopefully make sure my little seams are together and stuff. So uh, that, that'll be the, the tricky part is making sure it kind of looks like it comes to a point, right? With that little sashing in between. Keeps buffering lots. Uh oh, that's not good. Oh, you haven't seen the cutter in use? Oh, that's fantastic. I'm glad. See, it was, I said, I have to use the cutter for this one. I really need you. It's our fourth scrappy quilt. We got to use the cutter. Let's see what we can find out. See what we can find. How many layers of batting? I put two. I put two, Jerry. The weather is rubbish. Mm. Hello, 
Jennifer from Alabama. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a fun cutter. It really is. And you can get quite a few done in no time at all. So I had, I mean, if that's a strip of 25, I probably have like uh, 75 or more so here. And I was just, you know, uh, and I was only using one fabric, the fabric once. So I ended up getting four. Actually, I'll show you the cutters so you can see it. Take it off here. It's balance. It's on this little tray. Okay. So it cuts one, two, three, four at a time. Can you see that? Here, I'll show you on the back side because you can actually see the where the metal plate is. Okay, there we go. So you can see that it. So those are the metal blades that push up on the other side via the foam and, and cuts the fabric as you're pushing through with the little plexi and you're rolling it just like, you know, old fashioned when we used to play with Play-Doh, that sort of fun stuff. So um, that's, it's just like that. So you can, you know, put on a few layers and then cut right through and you've got yourself like 16 pieces in one pass. So it's a whole lot easier and it's more accurate than I think I would be with my ruler trying to make sure I had 500 pieces of all the same size. You know what I mean? Because I'm thinking it's probably going to be 500, 550 pieces for this quilt, um, not including the white bits, right? Because if that's one row and it's only, how, thick, how wide is that? Oops. It's only, you know, one, two, three, four, just, just a little over four inches. You know, you're going to need a lot of the four inches to, to make yourself some, some sort of a half decent quilt rise, right? So... Yeah, I, I like it. There's lots of, we have like a, quite a few dies here, so it's nice to be able to play with this one for sure. And it's nice and big and it's sturdy and, and you know it's, uh, it's working right. There we go. And then the little plexi that goes over it. So, and I'll pull out some pieces uh, that I want to work towards. You know, I, have, I haven't cut it all. I've, I put all my, my bunch of fabrics that I was, had in my piles, kind of had, Mediums off to the side, uh, lights were in the center, and then darks were off to the side here. And then, of course, I finished off this bag. This bag is what I did um, pretty much oh, just end of last weekend, I guess, to, to Monday or something like that. So, uh, or basket, you know, basket bag, whatever. It's fantastic. Goes in a great laundry bag, too. You know what I mean? Take it to the market, whatever. Fill your veggies in there. Garden bag, you know. Hauling stuff from inside the house, out of the, out of the house, whatever. Children, <laughs> cats. <laughs> yeah, so I have lots to still cut in here because what I had pulled out and already cut, I just put off side to the floor. Just in case I wanted to be able to recycle it back in again, I only really wanted four. Sometimes the piece was so small, I was only getting three. And there was actually, I think, one in here, I only got one. So... That's what scrappiness is all about. So that'll be the odd man out, this one right here. <laughs> Lisa, I don't think it's in here anyways. Nope, not yet. What? You had your time, Mr. Clive. So yeah, we'll cut some of that. We'll cut some more strips. I only have three here. I'd probably like to get about seven or eight more before I start putting more of the, uh, the um, little parallelograms together. <laughs> I had a lot of fun. Had a lot of fun making that bag, let me tell you. Okay, move this over here, but we got room to cut. I need a bigger board and a bigger space and everything. All right. Yeah, and these, I thought to give it a little bit, you know, I, you know, I worked with a uh, three quarter inch on the um, Bargello quilt. I didn't really want to go that small, so I went an inch. <laughs> I figured, yeah, the challenge was fun, but glad it was over. So we'll stick with an inch. <laughs> and I thought just enough of an effect between the uh, blues, all the blues together, and then that little strip of white. That's why I said it needs just a little bit of white to help complement that blue, um, all the blues that I have. So I still have a lot, a big pile that's, uh, like I said, were two inches or chunks or, or was not wide enough to fit on here. So it was, was not uh, four inches wide or anything like that. So that all went to the other blue pile. Could probably make a whole other quilt out of it. And then uh, I took out anything that was too crazy. 
I had a couple of samples over here. Um, here we go. No, don't nap in that pile. Okay. As much as I like this one with the cupcakes and stuff, I didn't toss it in there. To me, it had too much of the other colors besides the blue, even though it's really cute. I thought that's pretty adorable with the cuppy cakes. Totally cute. And then this one, it was had a little bit too much white with blue. So I thought, nah, that's, I didn't want that. And then this one, I thought originally was navy blue, but I realized it's black with the navy blue shadow and then gold. And I was like, eh, no, I don't know, what, I don't want that. So, yeah, those are the ones I eliminated. That where I was like, eh, questionable, they keep it. No, I don't want to keep it. I kind of want just more of these blue tones that I got going on here. <laughs> they do look pretty tasty, don't they, Diana? <laughs> that and there was one I had with the uh, cookies or yeah, no, yeah, chocolate cookies or something like that. I was like, oh, those are making me hungry. I'll take some of them. <laughs> they look like little girl guide mint cookies or something. So how is everybody? Everybody been excited for this? Been very excited for this. And then just think once, uh, you know, once I'm done this project with the blue, it'll start off with a bag, just the way, you know, start off with the bottom, a couple of strips, make it in the shape that you're hoping for, start attaching on the side, and then just work your way, keep working your way, working your way. If you wanted it to be more, I guess, straight up, I'd have to put markers, mark your way. Like if you wanted, you knew to get from this end all the way around again, it's like um, say 28 inches, then mark each strip along this way, 28 inches to make sure you're lining right back up at that one spot. You know what I mean? So that way you may have more of a uh, stand up sort of bag or basket or whatever, you know what I mean? Or box or whatever you want to make. Uh, I chose this kind of to be a little bit full because I wanted to be able to hold things and be able to flop out and, you know, that sort of thing. Take it to Guild, pack lunches in it, put it on my bike, you know, have sorts of fun stuff. So uh, I'm looking forward to starting the, the blue one and I'm hoping to be able to do it in that way a little bit more straighter up, up than, uh, than this one though. But I do love it. Isn't it beautiful? It's so much fun. <laughs> She called it Scrappy Sunday. <laughs> Scrappy Sunday. <laughs> I made bread earlier today. Hi, buddy. <laughs> Clive's not done his time. <laughs> well, I had a lot of fun with that, that's for sure. What? I know, you're not done, are you? You're like, no, Mama. I want some more love and... Ow, it's just your claws. Your claws are just too tough. You get too much tough lovings. Ow. Mom doesn't like tough loving. Okay, so we have a few strips. And I chose a good white cotton for this because it's only two, one inch. Uh, broadcloth would not be my first choice. If I was doing a bigger chunk, you could certainly use broadcloth. Uh, because it, but because, but because it's so small, I, you know, chose the really good cotton stuff. So just trim it off whenever I need. This is my, I have another full bowl to white. So, you know, I'm, I'm okay. I got lots here to finish this quilt. <laughs> It'll be there for it. All right, so put some of those off to the side because we don't really need them right, right now. So it's everybody, what you making? Okay, hello, Linda Taylor. I am doing my own kind of design. I have a uh, parallelogram uh, cutter via the Accu Quilt Cutter 2. I'll show you real quick before I start cutting some. That is the um, knife set, you can, just so you can see it on that side, because you can't really see it on the other side with the foam, because uh, it's, you know, you know what I mean. So as you can see that. Uh, and we're going to cut a bunch out. And I'm choosing to do it between light tones to, <clears throat> to dark tones. I've cut a, a bunch of lights already, but I have a whole basket still to cut. So I'm trying to get only three or four of each 
of the one color. And then if I need some more, I can always introduce them back in. I just didn't want, you know, 10 of this and two of that and, you know, try and keep everybody equal sort of thing. I know it sounds weird, but that's just how I roll. <laughs> what are you doing, Clive? You looking for a place to nap? <laughs> All right, so we'll cut a little bit more on the, <clears throat> actually, it doesn't matter what we cut. And some I was, you know, pre giving a little press. I was putting 25 of them together and then uh, putting a white strip of one inch on either side. Well, in between anyways. That's the stop. This is, this is you know, row one. Got to start somewhere. So my idea was to try and go from light to dark and hopefully that works. Okay, so you have a certain space to work in here to be able to place your fabric. You want to make sure you're going a little bit over on either side, at least a quarter of an inch. So that means you're doing four and a quarter uh, width to come down. Um, and then, of course, from tip to tip, you need another 19, 19 and a half inches. So, you know, four and a half or four and a quarter by 19 and a half. And just line that up, making sure I'm kind of getting my little tip down here, my little tip up there. Don't push on it because that is a blade under there. Just, you know, go visually look because you don't want to be cutting your finger. Okay, this one is a fat quarter. Uh, I'll hold it up to the little camera. Is that too green or can I toss that in there? I was waiting for you guys before I cut that. How many layers can you cut at once? Um, it, I'm comfortable knowing that it's not going to, you know, I don't know, mess up or whatever with doing it anywhere from about five to six layers. It says it can do nine. You like it? Toss it in. I kind of like it too. It has just enough blue. Reads more green than blue. Do you think that would be too, too much away from everybody else in the pile? Because that had a little bit of pink on it. And that had a little bit of pink on it, but is that too much green? <laughs> I really like it, and I really wanted it to go in the quilt. It looks good? All right. I don't even know who made it. Quilting Treasures 2014. That's all I got on it, just Quilting Treasures. It's very cute though, I like it. So we'll give that a little press. <clears throat> and of course you can like pre-cut your strip if you like. Uh, if you're only putting a few uh, layers of fabric in, you can just, you know, do your five or six and like this, you know, and then this just kind of tucks up on the side here sort of thing, right? Just make sure it doesn't get caught up under, you know, so if you want to utilize as much as possible. The important thing is these corners, making sure you're getting to these corners. Those are the most important, important things. All right, so what was that, only two layers? Let's see. Yeah, some of this leftover bits, this is all leftover bits um, from, I have about four or five blues in here, uh, from the North and South quilt. Remember that? There was a bunch of these, like, just chunks left over, and I didn't know what to, well, it just went into the stockpile of colors because I didn't really know what else to do with the rainbow collection besides make my own rainbow collection in a different way of quilts. So this only gives you three, but, you know, three is better than none, so I'll take three. You know, I could always put it in again if I wanted to and give me six. But like I said, everybody was just trying to, I'm trying to get, in, you know, between three and four and that's it. So, and you want to make sure your fabric is, you know, somewhat pressed. It's not so wrinkly. Don't make it wrinkly. That's pretty. And some of this is all new to me. I've just pulled it out because I just went into the blue pile or whatever. Um, and because uh, it was it was handed down or we bought it via the auction some of the stuff got all tossed together so at this point i don't know what's what <laughs> when he started sorting out <laughs> the rainbow collection hello pam baker she's my fellow crossing guard person 
when uh, actually during the Leah Day interview, and she asked me what was on my long arm uh, right then and there, it was Pam's quilt. And it was one she was doing for her mom, and it was beautiful. And I really just gave it that little accenty touch with the stitching. I mean, she did such a beautiful job on putting the quilt together to begin with, the quilt top together. So, yes, beautiful, beautiful. Well done. So that was her quilt we were chatting about. Actually, we, we met and had um, uh, tea on Friday morning after crossing guard because I had a dentist appointment. And lo and behold, I get in there and I'm sitting down and I'm waiting. And it's like five after 10 and they had to cancel on me because my the cleaning lady um, had to cancel because she had a home emergency of some sort. So I'm like, oh. just literally <laughs> like, really? But that's okay. I didn't put up a fuss. I just said, oh, well, whatever. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I was so nervous, KB. I really was. <laughs> I was like, I'm talking to a movie star. <laughs> She's famous. <laughs> um, actually, this one, well, because, uh, Sue, uh, to answer your question, uh, it was 25, gave me approximately 72 inches if I was cutting off at that end part, you know, where it angles up. And, and at the top to make it square, obviously. Um, unless I did some really wackadoodle border. I don't know what we think on that. Um, it just might. Uh, it, it depends on that. So at least 72 this way and four inches with the sashing. So the next one's only gonna be about three and a bit with this little extra sashing because it goes this way. It's gonna take quite a few rows. So I'm thinking I don't know how big, but we're probably talking about 500 squares, maybe 550 squares. No more famous than me. Really, Diana? <laughs> I don't think so. She's just so sweet and lovable and you just, she's so social uh, and you know, and you just, it's, she's easy to just kind of get to know sort of thing, right? Or feel like you can get to know. She's just a real human being, as my mother would say. They put their pants on one leg at a time. <laughs> All right, so this is a weird wanky piece. So let's, we might have to lay that out a little bit different on the board. Yeah, try not to put wrinkled pieces through. You can get some really weird cuts because of the wrinkle. So, you know. Okay, let's try and put that one there. Is that gonna give you, it's gonna only give me two. Two, two, two. Let's see if that can get me another one. I think that can give me three in there. Okay, so we'll do a little cut press and cut after this. Just move that off to the side because it doesn't really matter about that. It actually has a little bit of green in it. I kinda like that. Uh oh, Mr. Chaos. It's not getting his way. He's causing a ruckus. <laughs> All right, so you put your little plexi, your um, cover over top, because that's what pushes the blades up, up against the cutter, and it cut, comes between it. You know, your fabric becomes comes between it and you know the blades, and that's what cuts it, right? So you slide it under. Make sure you're lining it up. It's pretty much got the same size as the metal piece underneath. So making sure it's one is on top of the other. It's equaled up like, you know, you're trying to layer a cake or something like that. Make sure it's not on an angle or anything like that. It's nice and even. Start it and then just crank the wheel. Just holding it steady, going all the way through. I had to move my sewing machine over so I can get it off a little bit and out from underneath the roller. I use, just put the plexi off to the side here and lifting the corner of fabric reveals my pieces. But I knew that one wasn't gonna be whole. That's okay. But the rest we should be a-okay. Except for a couple pieces up there. There we go. And we have all those cut and ready to rock. See? Easy peasy. So what is that? Oh, okay, we don't need that one. So that was two, four, six, eight, 
10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. 20, 20 parallelograms in one little cut. Okay. And we'll put those off to the side and we'll sort them out. Okay. So then I was just taking this pile, which I'd just taken my, you know, big cut out of. And just taking it off and just putting it off to the side because like I said I didn't want too many repeats and then I could just load up here and go back the same way or if you're more comfortable just start move the tray over to the other side and just keep going it doesn't really matter so we'll grab some more colors here and give them a little press what's up buddy meow 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 but I don't understand is what he has to say at 3 a.m. What is so important that he has to tell us at 3 a.m.? Nothing in my books <laughs> is that important. <laughs> yes, Pop is excited. We all are. We really are. Be fun for a change. Okay, this is a way of a bigger piece here. I'm just going to kind of cut off what I need on my little left of my board here. Oh, and Pop ordered me a new board. I can't wait for it. So, well, I obviously I have to wait for it, but you know what I mean. I'm very excited. Apparently, every time he watched yesterday's video or edited yesterday's video, it was nagging him that I was <laughs> complaining about my board. We can't have that happen. Probably should have cut a little bit longer. Oh, well. I should just spend all right, so that's two. Making sure we're going point to point as best we can. Okay. And not pressing hard. Oh, this is another cute fab. Actually, it was a fat quarter. It was in a collection from my friend Joe Marie. Isn't that cute? It's got little spools of thread. Isn't that adorable? Hold on. There we go. Super cute. Except minus the thread. Why do I always give, show you? It, uh, there's no thread on any of it except for that one part. <laughs> Isn't that cute? I like that. Now, just a little pop of here and there, because a little bit of color there, a little bit of pop of color there. You know, it's the, it's the little things that speak out, right? Is that going to fit there? Yeah. Okay. Just give that a little press. Yeah, I thought it was really cute. It's got blue and brown and yellow and green. So it was just enough. Just because I, there's a lot, there's literally a whole bucket I chose not to put in this quilt because it was too crazy busy. It had too much on it. Like, uh, obviously, the cupcakes, you saw that there. Um, there was, hold on, there's a couple here. There's this one there. Too much red. You know, too much red on that one with yellow. I'm like, and then this one here, I'm like, it probably should have went in the green quilt instead of the blue quilt because now it reads more green than blue to me, even though I took it from the green and put it in the blue. So I'm like, ah. <laughs> so there's lots I didn't. So there's like probably two other quilts I could do with the stuff I didn't put in here. <laughs> Good morning, Sassalette. Happy Monday to you. Actually, I love blue too. This actually, this one, depending on how I much how big I want to make it, may become my quilt for my side of the bed. So, because I really like, I really like it, and that little bit of white in between. What are you doing? Don't love my foot. All right, so one, two, three layers there. We got some stripey stuff here. Hopefully, that's wide enough. I did pull it out. Hopefully, it is. This has got a little bit of creamy color, blue in there. A couple of little different shades of blue in there. It's quite pretty. And this, I wasn't, I wasn't sure. This was like, ooh, is that going to fit? I may have to start off with P, uh, the next piece with that just so I can really visually see that it's on there. Okay, here's another chunk. If we did that there and then the uh, back down there should be okay. Overlap a little bit. Just more of the other scrap pile. <laughs> 
Yeah, I love this ironing board cover. I'm like, why did I wait so long to make an ironing board cover? This is so pretty and it makes it makes me feel like I have some something luxurious in my sewing area. You know what I mean? Like and I feel like I deserve it. You know, why not? I worked hard. I work hard all the time. Well, most times anyways. Don't ask anybody. Um, <laughs> and I, I thought I deserved something nice and pretty like that. And by golly, I'm sure glad I made it. I'm just kind of kicking myself for not making it sooner. Because I, you know, came in from playing with Sophie yesterday. And I'm coming in and look at it. I'm like, oh, it looks so much better than that creamy one that would sit in there. You know what I mean? Sometimes you just got to treat yourself because you deserve it, by golly. And don't let anybody try to tell you otherwise. Yeah, the more, <clears throat> the most part of this is pretty much ironing your stuff before you cut it. But, you know, uh, of course, my scraps have been all shoved together in a big pile in a bin. And then I separated them. And then, ooh. <laughs> That's one way to take everybody. <laughs> you stay there. <laughs> and this also has a little bit of red and brown on it too. These two right here, they're just a little bit different shades on the red. They're actually from a sample of um, a flannel fabric I've probably had for... Oh my gosh, I don't even want to say, probably 15 years. Got them from Pop Sister. She used to work at a, or she got them from someplace. I don't know, they were samples that she managed to get fabric-wise and she's just, she gave me this big bucket full and yeah, I have been using it for 15 years since. So I can't say I haven't put them to use. They've made many a quilts. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to load that up. What, how many layers is that? That's one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, <clears throat> and just low and steady. There's no race going on here. You don't have to crank it like it's, you know, going out of style. And you can see how it's cutting. And if you feel that maybe, you know, it's, it's too much resistance, you're, it's, uh, you're having to fight with it, then don't put so many layers on. Easy peasy. I'd rather have it so it's nice and easy and have, you know, two layers less than have to struggle with it, you know. But that's just me. I got enough stress going on. <laughs> All right, and then just put my plexi to the other side and then lift up my fabric. Okay, you can see where it came from. Put it down there and then pick off the ones that didn't get a complete cut. Put them down in the pile too. And then you have a lot of parallelograms. Okay. All right, so let's put this over here. So you've seen me do that a couple times. You know how it goes. Put some of these over here. And we'll make a couple of rows. Okay. How, um, that's a good question. We've had it for just over a year, right? Pop, right? Yeah, I think so. Just over a year. Um, and I, it's not like I use it every day. Uh, this is probably the most is, I've used it since the, um, Hunter Star Mountie quilt, the 150 Canada's 150th birthday quilt. Um, I've used to cut, to cut all the pieces for that. I cut kits for it, uh, so on and so forth. So um, it was. I, I don't. I haven't had to replace one yet. So and I've got two sizes. That's a big one, and then I have a smaller one depending on the cutter, right? The cutter underneath, because you need the tray to fit the cutter. You can't just put the cutter under. You know, you need the tray to feed it on. <laughs> I don't sleep. No, <laughs> actually, I do sleep. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't have a couch to go sit on. So I have my comfy chair or my comfy bed. Uh, I like to keep busy. 
Uh, I like to do a lot of things for donation and I like to do a lot of things of trying to use up my stuff. So I think of ideas of how to use it up and what's the best way to use it up. Um, I, I don't know. I just, I just try to stay out of trouble because I figure, you know, if I, if I stop, I'll be in trouble. <laughs> I don't know. I just like doing what I do. So I don't mind doing it. You know what I mean? Do, do, do. All right. So it's kind of sort these in these colored piles. Because these are kind of more the, that's more the dark side. Maybe even that too. But these ones are definitely medium to, medium to light. So I want to keep those in the little order. Okay. Oh, that's in the wrong one, silly. Get back here. You know, that that really matters. I just don't want them to be too, too mixed up. Oh, see, there's another one. And I could possibly use these uh, at the end if I wanted to, to put in. If I want to make it a little bit longer, I can attach one of these and then cut this one in half, you know, that sort of thing. So there is a use for them. Um, so save them. I love the little, little sewing fabric there, the little thimbles. It's so cute. When I thought it, I saw it, I was like, oh, score! I love that! Totally going in. Put that in the bucket. There we go. And that's a lot. Welcome, Lucy. <laughs> we try to have a lot of fun here. We do, we do, we do, we do. And I'm thinking, um, I did post this, this bag to a couple of pages that I was so excited about doing my scrappy bag to remember my scrappy quilts. Of course, this being the red and gray quilt, this one, uh, which was my own design. This one being the bear paw one, which we followed a very traditional, one of the very first uh, uh, quilt block patterns that we came across. It was like the first record of it was like 1842 or something like that. And then the green one, which is a very classic Bargello as well. It's been around for a while, but I did it on a bit of a scrappy bag bases so it was nice to be able to make that all together and then you know make more memories there and you know it's fun it's fun I love this so we're probably going to do a little bit of a tutorial on the next one if if you guys are all interested and in how I I do this one make it a little bit more straighter uh, coming up a little bit taller maybe add handles instead like create a handles uh, more than just more so than just the basket handle sort of thing um, yeah so very looking forward to that one too making a making a making a tutorial to show everybody how it goes on we can figure it out we're smart peoples yes please awesome awesome Tina will do happy to happy to all right we were gonna leave that one for next piece to see let's see right now move that plexi off the side is that gonna be big enough oh I really like the moon and stars oh no it's not maybe Maybe in a couple of places. I may be able to get two. I'd rather have two than none, so. <laughs> Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you rather have two of that than none of that? Good weekend project? Probably, Claire. That's a good idea. You need a lot of rope, though. Because you think, I think I said in the first video, it was 158 feet. Or was it 50? No, I'm sure it was 158 feet of the red. And then it was about the same for the pink. And then about the same for the green ish you know I didn't go measuring it up on those ones I just tried to oh that pile looks good and then <laughs> went for it uh, but because it got a little bit bigger around the top that of course that stretched those feet a little bit more going around and around and around but um, I love it I, I look at it and go holy moly I made that and I think it's really kind of cool I wish I can kind of give it to my mom but she wouldn't know what to do with it <laughs> you know all those things you're just so proud of you just want to give to mom <laughs> Give, give to the parent that raised you and loves you for who you are, even with all your quirky, quirky craziness. Uh, no, I didn't. Um, I just used batting. Um, just, just batting, and that was it. Hold on. And it was just cut to about um, two, two inches to two and a quarter inches. I tucked it inside a two and a half inch strip by folding it over itself as if I were to do a binding on a quilt sort of thing. And, and then just sewed right in the set on the edge. And then when you put them together, you do a zigzag and you just stitch those two little butt edges right up against each other. So uh, it, it's not difficult at all. It does take a lot of thread, especially with the zigzag. Uh, but it's a great way to use these bits and bobs that you would normally go, okay, what do I do with this? You know, 
you make a bag. That's what you do. So, and of course I started off with a chunk of <laughs> um, batting about this by this, you know, so in a square by square, by that, and I had about four layers in that bottom bit is all four layers. And then I just, what? Oh my gosh, you're so demanding. Oh. <laughs> all right, get your Clive time. <laughs> Oh, the Camden Bowl? That was one of my very favorites. We're going to do a um, kind of like a Rockport bag um, take on that Camden bag sort of thing. We're going to do something like that too. Which is a little bit different than that, but, you know, similar. Having a barbecue? Oh, actually, Pop took pork chops out for dinner, so I don't know. I think probably rice and pork chops. There we go. Wave to the peoples, Clive. <laughs> See, I was content just to sit in front of you. <laughs> Omni says hi, Clive. Hmm? Sassy lets Omni says hi. Hmm? Hey? Okay. I'm just chilling. Just chilling. Round <laughs> two, Clive, yes. Sophie's like chilling out on her bed. We were playing outside in the yard, so I tried to play it out. It's beautifully sunny out. A little crisp, though, with the wind chill, but very nice out. Very much. <laughs> His audio was too meager earlier. <laughs> He's like, I did check in the thread counts of those people. Yeah, no, no, it wasn't enough. <laughs> right, buddy? Hey. I'm not sewing anything yet, but I will be. Think you can handle that? Too much chaos? Hey. <laughs> hmm. Nose kisses. Aren't I lucky? Okay, alrighty. If I give you some treats, will you go away? <laughs> Hold on, let me go give him some uh, some temptations. <laughs> Come here, buddy. There we go. Hey, okay. there you go. That'll appease him for like 20 minutes, if not more. <laughs> Okay, so what I wanted to remember how I said it when I was trying to go from light to dark. So this is my row one, and I only put pretty much, to me, that was kind of a dark. I don't know why I put two of those in a row there. Um, oh, well, staying. I ain't touching it now. Uh, this one was dark. This one was dark, and that was kind of pretty much it. So I'll move off of that and, you know, add a couple, maybe, you know, four darks on the next row and move up from there. So I want to make sure I'm incorporating one of these and I'm incorporating one of these on the darker tones. And then here, and we'll do that one and we'll grab some other ones that are over here that we've already cut, okay? So, and we need 25, okay? And we could put these together any way we like just as long as we're happy with the way it's going. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. And Mary, you, know, you are in control. Like the, the Bargello, like that looks awesome. And I look at that and go, I made that. I made that. And then when the border I put on, it really kind of, it really needed that little extra touch of dark green because there was only one square really per se going up and down of dark green that was really noticeable it was my favorite color green and the 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 texture on it or print on it was very fabulous so i needed that little puppy yellow so that's only an inch and a half and then that little minty green with the green uh uh, leafy sort of print. You can, it's really kind of tiny, so you probably couldn't even tell it was a leafy print. And then that bigger chunk of dark green just set it off. And I was like, oh, that looks so fantastic. I was so happy with it. Like, I was, all right, I did some good. <laughs> Sometimes you wonder. All right, so like that and that and like that. Let's pull from a couple other colors here to tie in from the first row. Do, do, do. Just mix and match and have some fun. You know, it's your scrappy quilt. And I clearly can make another two or three. Do. Over here. Over here. Come here, you. All right. Now, that's three there. 
Oh, let's leave that there. Let's see what we got going on. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. Oh yeah, twenty-five. There we are, twenty-five. There we go. Okay, we got ours. Got our next row. Uh, I've ever used Stuart, Stuart, Soart, Soart. Sorry, Soart software. Not oh oh pop. Sorry, it's not a question to me. <laughs> what are you talking about, energy? Hmm. <laughs> no, actually, Angie's up a lot. She she worries me. I worry she's not getting enough sleep. Okay, I want to make sure this is going in the opposite direction because. I'm not trying to make these a chevron. I'm trying to make this as a feather sort of thing. So I want to make sure they're coming up this way. So I guess either way, I guess it, I could have just flipped it and flopped it instead. I don't know. I just want to make sure I'm doing it the right way. Okay. So if I start off adding them to this side. Okay. Is that going to work? Hold on. Do, do. No, because he's going to go that way. Uh, I can't mess this up. Oh, there we go. Is it that way? No, it's got to be the long sides that go together. That just makes it go up that way. Did I have to flip them the opposite way to cut? Yeah, I guess so. Just flip that way. Well, that messes with my plans. Hmm. I guess if they all went that way, that's still okay. It's not quite what I was hoping for. Oh, blah, blah, blahs. Oh, the blah, the blah, the blahs. <coughs> I'm sorry. So if I put it that way. <coughs> <coughs> no, that doesn't work. <coughs> nope, that doesn't work either. It just goes all the way. Well, now I'm... Snaggle flagged. <sighs> Means I had to turn some upside down when I put them through the feeder. <coughs> it's not like I don't have the material to do some of it. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> I think Clive sets me off sometimes. <coughs> hmm. Yes, I did. I needed to put it the other way. <sighs> the feather front, hold on. Oh, yeah, exactly, Claire. Oh, boogers. <laughs> That's okay. It just means I have to cut more fabric. <laughs> just the other way. <laughs> Flip rows in different directions, it will be fine. <laughs> No, I haven't cut up all the scraps. I got lots left. Lots left. <laughs> Just make that one. I guess I'll that too, uh, Elspeth. <laughs> Just make them all in the opposite direction. <laughs> um, cut upside down now. Make two piles. Yeah, exactly. The right way and the wrong way. Oh. Oh well, lesson learned. Let's cut some. This may be a little bit different than I anticipated <laughs> because of this tiny boo-boo. <laughs> I did not think about that when I was cutting, let me tell you. <laughs> 
All right, so this will have to be for row three. I think we pretty much have enough for row three for a while. Oh, well. That's okay. Lesson learned. And we shall move on. Progress without tears or upset or cry. Or kicking the cat. No, <laughs> I wouldn't kick the cat. Right, Clive? Unless he starts eating my paperwork like he does. No, he's actually playing with a feather. Okay, so that... Let's move this off to the side here. Or is your stack of that direction. And since I happen to like this, let's iron it up and we'll make sure it's flipped and going in the other direction. That's okay, we got this. Life is adventure and how you adapt and deal with it, it shows a lot about a person. So we're just gonna adapt and move on and think happy thoughts and we got this going on and flip it upside down, don't be a dork. And there we go. Okay. That's a little short up there. That's why I was folding it up. Make sure it was cut, covering the bottom there. Okay, so let's put this in the chair. What? You're being a little monkey. Okay, so let's pick some of these ones I've already tossed on the floor already and did some for upside down, okay? These are all the ones I've cut already. So line that up. It's not like it was a major flub up, so, you know, just fix and adapt. Can't be too mad at yourself. It's not like I wasted fabric. I can just save it for all the other sides. As you, well, I was saying, I don't know why I didn't think about that. Brain fart. <laughs> so what I'm claiming is brain fart. <laughs> do do. All right. So I don't think it really matters with these solid color ones. So I could flip those out and put them off to the side. Um, uh, maybe I'll hold off on that one. But definitely the printed ones we definitely need to redo. Note to self. <laughs> okay. The cutter on. Line it up. Yeah, that's true, Jerry. Lynn. I wasn't thinking about that. I was just thinking about strips of four and a half by, you know, 19 or whatever it was that I needed to be. So those should be going the right way. Okay, put that in that stack pile there and I'll make myself a few. Put this off to the side. Don't think I'm gonna get anything out of this one. Nope, not even a one. Oh well, that's okay, it'll only be in one direction, nor this, there's nothing left of that, that's okay. I could cry later. <laughs> there. And there, making sure they're upside down, that the wrong side's facing up. Sorry, buddy, did I step on your tail? Sorry, bud. I don't think that's big enough either, nope. But I have some more of that somewhere, I'm sure. Okay, that one needs a bit of a pressed love there, so. I'm gonna lay it upside down. Okay, so is that one, two, three, four, The important part is covering the tips, right? The tip up above and the tip below, making sure that it's all covered. OK. 
Okay, this was a really wonky piece. I think we'll just kind of press that there and see what we can get out of it. Oh my gosh, Ness. Well, ha good sleeps. Happy ZZs. <laughs> <laughs> all right and then we'll we will cut okay we'll run this through so we'll tuck all this little buddies up on here I think the key is to the plexi is making sure it's moved you're not constantly cutting in the same spot all the time and and, uh, and you can flip and flop the, the the plexi cutter too right you know the plexiglass sorry okay All the way through. Lift it up and out of the way. Put it off to the side. There we go. Another stack. We'll get a few more. Because we're going to need some all the way across. So oh, there's this one stack that's already kind of partially together. Let's just leave that together and just leave it upside down. See where we can get from that. Okay. Just a little bit. A couple pieces. Cover the tip up there. Yeah, next, the next ones I lay out that I haven't cut yet with the one way, I'm just going to try and fold the two of them exactly that, how you were saying. And then that way I get the two cuts. Um, and of course, with the solid ones, it really doesn't too, too matter. It's, it's all the print ones that you really have to worry about. Okay, what else we got going on here? Uh, maybe, maybe. Okay. Where's the tip up there? It's all the way up there. Actually, Pam is working on a quilt for her son called Basket Weave. Is that is that right, Pam? We did all the cutting um, uh, here at the at the at the at the quilt shop to make sure that she was just she just had to go home and, and um, just start quilting it or getting the pieces all sewn together. So that was that was fun to make sure that she was. Uh, got started on that and was ahead of the game and could just when her free time whenever she had a chance um to just start sewing so and she, her blocks are beautiful and they it actually called for sashing in the pattern but we kind of really like it without it so um but you know that's i mean that's your your choice of uh, adapting a pattern right the wall was a basket weave okay okay i'll just make sure it was i thought it was because it looked like a basket weave, but i thought maybe it had a different name so I didn't want to call it the wrong thing. All right, so those are all upside down. I'm giving myself more to choose from for my other side. <laughs> all right. Okay, that off to the side. All right, do one set more of what we can with what we got going on here, because some pieces we can't because it's not enough. Let's do a few here. Okay. All right, remember upside down. You turn me, you'll give me love instinctively. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> All right, that needs to go a little bit of an angle. And this just gets a lot of squares or, you know, pe quilt pieces, I guess we call them, because they're not really squares, they're parallelograms, but, you know, uh, but they're still quilt pieces done in a very short period of time. Just a few cranks and you're rocking and rolling and you're, 
you know, and you're getting everything cut, like everything cut that you can think of that you're going to need. And then some. <laughs> oh, I have one of my other hoodies on the floor there. He's, oh, thinking he's napping on it. Should I let him? Yeah. It's black and he's black. He'll just blend right in. I won't even, we won't even tell where he is. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, one more. And then we'll crank the press upside down. Okay. Like I say, you don't want to give yourself too many layers. You can always uh, add, you know, do a couple more cranks to get it all finished instead of having to struggle to try and feed it through. Okay. All the way. All right. I'll move the fabric piece. Okay. Off to the side, all the buddies. All right, okay, now we can put some stuff together. None of the shenanigans. Okay, still wanna be able to cut another side of these guys. So let me just move this over here, and this over here, that up there and over there. That's not gonna be visually in anybody's disturbance, okay. Come on, you. Over there. Into the pile. Oh, of course. No, what size are you? Are you this size? No, nope, he's that side. That side. There and there. Okay, so these are all my other side. Okay, so now I need to pick my 25 out of here to start making my row. Okay. Like I said, I had about three darks in the first row. I want about four darks in the second row. To me, this is a not a full dark. It's very depressing. There we go. There's a dark. That's not really a dark. We have to go pull some darks. Where's the other guys? There we are. There's those two. I like those two. Because they're just a little bit different. And where? Oh. Ooh. Might have to cut some more dark. Here's this. Actually, there we go. That's dark enough, right? Okay. Between those guys. Okay. So we know we got four. And we need 21 more. So that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, can't have that one. Ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, that's too shy, that's too bad, 23, 24, it's okay if we use the moon one again, 24, 25. Okay. I think of anybody else that I missed out. That's okay. All right. So now we kind of want to mix those four darker ones in there because I don't want them all being in the same spot. I just kind of want it to be random, you know, a little bit of working the way from uh, the light to the dark with the transitioning in between. So this pile I'm going to stick over here and we'll have to label those in a bucket or a bag or something so I don't get all messed up. Oh, what's the has got good ideas? Oh, keep them upside down. Ha ha ha! Done. <laughs> Done and sorted. Thank you very much. <laughs> I like good ideas. <laughs> Let's make them happen. Okay, so, <coughs> hold on, let me get something to drink here. 
think Clive sucks the energy out of me. <laughs> and she kicking Clive. Oh, I would never kick Clive. Kick Clive. I don't kick him. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully nobody took me serious on that. I really don't kick my cat. <laughs> I scoot him in the bum a little bit with my shoe when he's trying to get too close to the door, but I don't ever kick him. That's just mean. Nah, Mr. Clive. He's too sweet. Okay. So putting these together, you would think, oh, I just line that raw edge up up to that raw edge and sew away. No, 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 no. What you need to do is you are actually overlapping and you need to have a tiny little corner. I'll show you the small camera so you can see here. You need a tiny little corner on one side. Can you see that right there? And a tiny little corner on the other side. Can you see that? Hopefully. Hopefully you can. I don't know, I'm trying to. I'm trying to show you. It's just a tiny little corner. You do not line them up edge to edge with edge to edge corner to edge corner. You have to overlap them just a smidgey. I'm sorry, I, I, I'm not in the, in the camera and I apologize. Down, down. Okay, there we go, up a little bit, sorry. I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure it out. Just give me a moment. Okay, can you see that? Hopefully you can see it with the, because it's a dark color and you can see it on the back of my hand. Okay, so you can see that little tiny triangle. Holy bejeebies, I suck at this, come on. Okay, hopefully that's here. So that on one side and that, and you get the same on the other side, okay? So you're not button up against each other. You have to have that little tiny ear over flap. Can you see that? Okay, I can really see it there, even though it's in the top corner, but you get what I'm going at, okay? That's how you put them together. Because if you were to put them the other way, they slowly end up shifting the opposite direction so and when you put the first one together and you look okay well that's not right so then you take the seam ripper because it's your best friend and you take that seam out and you put a new seam in shifting it a little bit it made me think of um what i was doing i don't know which project that i was working on but i had to do that little shift over a little bit and to for the ears to to come up so i was like okay i gotcha i i got this Oh, I haven't got in to call the wit midwife yet, but I am such a big sap. I don't need any more sappy shows. Like, I really don't. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's Clive. Clive sets me off. I don't know. It's like, I think I don't know if it's his fur or his dander or whatever, but sometimes he, he does, he does set me off. Yes. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thumbs up. Oopsies making a disaster here all right so we're gonna sew some pieces here um just we didn't get any mail this week but just so you know that these are the the patches the nine patches that are going for the next quilt uh there's these ones here um that are they're going to be the four corners and then this one here is going to be the centerpiece we've had some a couple of little odd blocks come but i want to make use of them so that'll be the centerpiece these will be the four corners and then we'll have to um uh, adapt the um, nine patches to, to, to fit in so no worries we will we'll get it if I have to add a little fabric on everybody that's what's gonna happen I loved how the other one turned out though you guys did such a great job for the hearts around the world quilt you know that's quilt number one now hopefully I've sewn this in the right direction I was hoping for okay see and then that's how, here, I'll press the seam and then you can see better, okay. Now I'm not really pressing these seams in any particular direction. Ooh, I'm gonna go tuck that in my pants there. Um, just because they're all blue, okay. See how nice and smooth that is on either side? Hopefully you can, let me get my side of the camera over there, okay. So it's got a nice edge down here and a nice edge down here, okay? And then we just keep adding on and that's gonna give us this other little point in the other direction. Okay, 
And we can add on either side if you realize, oh, I want that dark color to be in the center, then you just add on either side. And just line it up with a little triangle on one side poking out and a little triangle on the other side poking out and then just stitch down. And of course you could multi-feed these through. I like working on one at a time. So that's, that's me. And of course you can press after each one. I think I'll press after every second one. Let's grab another one in here. Maybe not a floral, medium blue there. Okay, a little triangle on one side, a little triangle on the other. And that's how you line it up, okay? That's and then like parallelograms, even chevrons. Uh, any sort of uh, funky quilt like this, you won't find intimidating. You know, so if you just use those little, those little key things, right? See? And it just lines right up. Can you make, I don't see why not, just you would have to use a, a template, I'd use a template, and then making sure um, you're only cutting maybe two or three or four at a time, and then going from there. It would take you a lot longer, uh, but I don't see why you couldn't do it. Oh, we can't use that one. Let's have to grab another one. I had a little cut on the end of it. There's not a lot unless I use it at the very end, you never know. I had two in there anyways. That one's got a wrinkle in it. <gasps> what? We'll get that wrinkle out. Have to press anyways. Yeah, you'd have to use some sort of a template though, or you know, making sure your your cuts were accurate. I mean, I figured I had about 500, 550 maybe to, to cut of these, maybe less, depending on what size I really want to make it. Um, so I better, you know, best to use the cutter. So it's very warm. Okay, so let's do this one. And we're just building up, building up our row of 25. Okay. And then we'll put some sashing on one side of it, and then we'll attach it to the one on the wall. Do. I love all the shades of blue. You know, it's it's almost like the pink. To me, it's like, I, kn I knew there was lots of shades of, of green. Like, I really did, because green was one of my favorite colors, or is one of my favorite colors. Um, but for, for blue and pink, I really didn't think there was that many. There really, really is. And of course, you can pick and choose what you colors you want next to each other, you know. If you don't want the, it's too soft toned, or you got too many flowers next to each other, or two solids next to each other. I mean, it's, it's your scrappy collection, and maybe that's all you have is solid. So, you know, I've got a mix of this and that and everything, thanks to, you know, generous people and, 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 and saving things and collecting things. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> Do. Yes, we're very getting very excited for spring. We have a little bit of snow in the forecast, but what we were supposed to get the other day, a big dump did not show up, so we were very happy about that. I think it went elsewhere, and I'm sorry for anybody who got it. Um, <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, and it's, but I'm, I think we're pretty much uh, in the clear for, for, for spring. We're, we're okay. No massive major drops in temperature. It's, it's around five, six, and eight, and minus a little bit with the wind chill. So, all right, add a couple more. All right, so there's a few. A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven together there. Okay. Oh, got a little wrinkled. How come that got wrinkled? Oh, because it landed on the floor. That's right. Okay. It's a good thing I have this awesome new ironing board cover, so I don't mind ironing now. 
Before it was just so tedious with that plain old cover. <laughs> I really am like, why didn't I do this when I got the board? Like seriously. But I'm glad I didn't do a scrappy one because, um, you know, it, which the seams would show up. So I think if I had one that I was just taking to like uh, a portable one to um, a, a retreat or something like that, or a day retreat or something, that would that would be okay. Because you're just pressing little things, I think, right? All right, so do a little finger press, add another one. Okay, let's do some solid. There we go. Oh, that's a nice little bright pop. Do, do, do. Mm -hmm. Do a cheater cloth cover. Oh, with a with uh, quilted print on it already? Actually, I have a bit of those already. That actually would be the uh, rainbow panel from Northcott. That's, that's an awesome panel. Sue just bought two of them, and I, the, the post, the, the mailage on that was so fast. It was, Pop and I were looking at each other when she sent us the email to say thank you for, for the package. She got it already. I was like, what? I'm like, wait a second. I just mailed that. Like, <laughs> holy moly, that was fast. <laughs> so, yeah, it's the cute little uh, rainbow panel. It's the back to a couple of charity boy quilts, and uh, it, it looks really cute. Uh, why not? I love it. One of my favorites. All right, so let's give those a little press because we added a couple. So we can give those a little pressy press. Make them all nice and cute. Hanging out in a row. Beautiful. Do, do, do. All right, so let's do another dark down here. Yes. Hmm, I don't know if I want those two so close together. No. One than that one. How about this one? There we go. I like that one. So picky. <laughs> oh yeah, you were talking. I know we were we were floored because I think he said to you approximately five weeks because that's what happened uh, with one of the seam rubbers just before Christmas. It took like five weeks to get there, and it was like, what is going on? Are you kidding me? Like slow boat? Like like somebody paddling it there on a raft? Like what's going on here? So that's why we just anticipated, like, maybe that's what was going to happen with yours, too. But it was like a week. Like, I don't think we've had fastest service like that to get down to the States. <laughs> Let it cross Ontario, you know what I mean? <laughs> we were pretty, pretty impressed, let me tell you. We were like, whoa. All right, let's give it an eye roll on. Yeah, it's very happy to be busted into my blue scraps. Like I probably could make another quilt with probably a blue Bargello. <laughs> the blue Bargello. Actually, I love the green one. The green was so, so pretty. So happy the way it turned out. All right, so add a little couple more on the other side. Actually, let's add a dark down here first. Then we'll work on the other side from the dark one. From the dark one. Hello from Nova Scotia. Why, thank you, Tanya. Much appreciated. We try to have fun and have a little learning, but don't think, take things too seriously because life is short. You're supposed to enjoy it, not stress about it. So, why not have some fun? 
My beautiful ironing board cover. <laughs> so happy I made that. Oh, that was two of that. So you may want to put that out to the side. Got two of that too? No. Okay. Put that there and then we'll work on the dark side. <laughs> oh, probably. And I was thinking it's always customs fault for holding up packages anyways. I figured they like what's going on in them. <laughs> oh, look at they, they ordered fabric, check it out. <laughs> All right, so this side, let's add that nice little light pop here color. This little turquoise color. Do, 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 do. I'm not sure if that's gonna work, cause it's, oh, maybe. Straight lined up there. And it just blue's red. I figured stick with the theme, go blue. Why not? Use the pink on the pink, green on the green, blue on the blue. a green, well green, sorry, I'm so used to saying green, a blue kind of, that didn't sit quite as right as I was hoping. I may have to seam rip that out. I think it slipped a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm kind of trying to do like feathers. I'm trying to make them so they come to point. So I realized earlier on that I had to uh, flip when going through the cutter, the AccuQuilt cutter. Uh, upside down and right side up if I want to make them to come into points, okay? You could do it as a chevroni type style if you wanted to, but I'm putting a little bit of white sashing in between. That's only an inch. So it would be quarter inch, uh, sorry, half inch when, when finished. See, that's the visible part of it. I'm looking forward to seeing that once I get the second row done. But this was just a little weird piece for some reason. It seemed longer than the others. So, because you could tell it went all the way up to the end here without the corner, so. Silly. Yeah, this is kind of one I've just kind of created. You know, I, I created the red and gray scrappy one. I followed the rules with the bear paw and I followed the rules with the Bargello. Uh, this one I'm doing my own thing again, so. I'm using my AccuQuilt cutter with the parallelogram um, uh, style, I guess, whatever template, and uh, and just cutting a whole bunch out, a whole bunch out to sew together. All right, now let's try this piece instead. See if it was just that piece was a little wonky. Yeah, it seems so. That oh, well, piece was just a little weird. Okay. It is pretty cool. So this is row one, and what I'm trying to do is make them so they go in a, a, a varying uh, shade from light to dark. So there's row one, there's 25, with just a little white sashing in between. Yeah, so I, I like it. I'm liking it a lot. <laughs> And I'll have to take some time to spend on it between now and next weekend for sure. Or it's not going to get done. Because like I said, I only want to keep about three weekends um, or three live streams per color sort of thing. And then we'll, we'll move to um, yellow and orange next will be after this one. I'm going to mix those two colors together. So, let's mm, grab another color over here. Nope, nope, nope. Got some more of these guys. Those ones were, there we go. <coughs> <coughs> do, 
<laughs> uh, I was, it was so weird on Thursday. I'm like, all right, you're not doing tech talk today. <laughs> so I'm like, so when's my block of the month? I'm bugging and bugging him about it. <laughs> so I need to get started, you know. <laughs> Can't keep up the schedule. <laughs> oh, bye, Sue. You're leaving. Bye bye. Have a good sleep. <laughs> Yeah, no more snow days. I think they're done. I know they were really hoping on f Friday last week. They were hoping for a snow day because we were supposed to get a bunch, but it did not show up. It was kind of funny. Poor little munchkins. All right, let's press and then count. Alright, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Alright, so we need that six more. 18. <coughs> oh, the sun's shining in my window. Okay, so here be 20. Trying to even those darker tones out on this row. Wow, that is a very windy day. So this would be 21. Hello, Colton Wade, also known as Diana, <laughs> if I remember correctly from last week's video. We do kilometers in Canada. Yeah, we do. Okay, so that was what, 22, and then some of those were not the right size, so this would be 23. And then we'll have to pull from the stack. Three. And keep those guys over here. Three. Let's see. Twenty-four. And uh, let's do Already have that. Let's put this at the bottom then. Oh, my pill slipped away. See how many we need? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Just need one more. Just one more, that is. 
Do -do 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 -do. Let's try and get that one because we, he wasn't in here already. He was in this pile somewhere. There we go. I like that one. Put him over here. Do -do. Do -do 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 -do. This would be 25. And then from this, once pressed, should be able to line up a white sashing piece on the side and then attach it to the other one. All right. Beautiful. Such a pretty row. Okay, so since it's going to sit this way next to its buddy, I need to attach a white strip on this side, okay? So we're going to leave that there for a moment and put two little bits of white together and do that little angle piece. Where'd it go? Where's that big guy? All the way over there. Hello, <laughs> Hello, Wanda. Happy you're here, hanging out with us and spreading the cheer. At least you better be. <laughs> right, Wanda. <laughs> All right, so we're going to sew it down on the outside. <laughs> God, you can make it too. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to just, and it's not, I'm not pre-cutting this or anything like that. It's going to have to be cut to fit once the row is done. Uh, so I'm just making sure I'm coming up above the tip there, even though I know I'm going to probably be trimming it off here. But, you know, I'm giving me the, uh, that opportunity if I wanted to do something funky in here too. Like what about... Uh, um, you know, bias cut binding, you know, that sort of thing. That's be a great example to be able to how to, you know, stitch that up properly, right? So you never know. I could want a challenge. <laughs> the key is not to stretch. Don't stretch anything. Don't pull anything. Don't yank anything. Just leave it as it is. Let them ride next to each other. Nice and comfortable. I didn't worry about the tippy tails. If they're gonna bother me, I'll cut them off later. And just put her on down with a quarter inch seam allowance. Just a smidge, there we go. Yeah, you gotta learn new stuff all the time. Keeps you um, a little like gray matter all in tune sort of thing. You know what I mean? Trying new things, discovering what works, what doesn't work, what you like, what you don't like. You know, there's lots of things. I don't like Y seams. <laughs> yeah. Actually, my friend, Pat Bell, and she's a fellow long armor too, and she's super sweet. And she actually gave me a recommendation for a pattern for you guys that had partial seams. So I think I'm gonna we're gonna do it as a uh, weekend project coming up soon about how to do partial seams. So stu stay tuned for that. It's gonna be a very good, very good um, show for sure. 
Lots to learn. And it's such a pretty block too, so. So thank you very much, Pat, if you're watching. So if anybody needs a long armor on the other side of Ottawa, let me know. I'll give you Pat's name. <laughs> okay, so there I've attached my white strip sashing to the one side, okay? And then I'm going to press it. So it's, I'm pressing towards the dark. I'm trying to get everything to go onto the blue side and you don't see any, anything on the white, okay? <laughs> Actually, white seems to okay. Well, especially the block of the month one turned out really well. Uh, it was a very uh, nice, gentle introduction to Y seams. Uh, Cause then you're like, hey, I got this. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All Y seams, then Pop is stitching it together. Thank you very much. <laughs> we'll see how he changes his tune, mm, ladies. <laughs> All right, so we'll keep those over here. All turned upside down. We're not going to get those messed up. Got enough messed up going on as it is. All right, now I'm just going to press. Press to the dark all the way along, and then we'll sew it to the other side, and that'll be two rows of our many, many, many rows. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I like the length of it. The length, I'm like, ooh, that's that's a good height for me because I like to tuck things. I like to tuck the quilt under my feet, like wrap it around like a little envelope sort of thing. My feet are kind of tucked in there, and uh, and then, you know, tuck it around me like a little sleeping bag sausage sort of thing, you know. Thought, oh, that'll be a nice length. That'll be good. And I love blues. And as much as I like greens, I might give that green one to my mom. So, well, her birthday's coming up in May. And I know she has lots of quilts of mine, but I think she'd be really proud of that one. Not that she's not proud of everything I do, but just saying. Because she loves green. I think that would just be totally tickled pink for sure. Well, I can be tickled pink with green, so you know what I mean. Tickled green. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I haven't really used many of these blues since last year's uh, big blue hexagon beach bag. So... That was the last time I used a lot of these blues. Uh, Pop looks blurry to me on my camera. Oh, it must be just the settings going on. <clears throat> See, my, I'm blurry on my screen on this one, the little one. Okay, so I'm sewing that on there, sorry, onto that side because we were coming down with the points. That's why I had to flip them over to make sure they were being uh, cut upside down. So now I'm gonna take this one off my board here Okay, and now we're going to do some lining up because <clears throat> we don't want it to be off. We want it to look precise and that we possibly knew what we were doing. You know what I mean? Like maybe some sort of small inclination. Okay, I think I'm just going to visually line it up and see if anybody is next to each other that I may not necessarily want next to each other. Not like it's a school trip or anything and they're going to misbehave, but, uh, oh, those two are together. You know, I don't mind that. It's actually kind of... Let's see if anybody else is lined up. No, just that one. Hmm. So either I take it out now <clears throat> or I leave it because it lines up. I kind of like it. We even leave the odd one so it matches up, but make sure I continue that along the rest of the quilt. Just the odd one. <laughs> what was the laugh out loud? <laughs> what? <laughs> 
Leave it. I kind of like it. I kind of like that it's, uh, and it's actually even the row was lining up. It's kind of like it was meant to be here, to tell you the truth. So. <laughs> Uh, hmm. Yeah, I'm leaving it. I like it. I'll make sure to just continue that later on in, you know, not every row, but uh, yeah, we'll do it that way. Okay, so what I'm going to do is going to try and line this one up. See, I'm trying to lay it right on top, right on top of the old one. Not old one, but the first row sort of thing. Okay, sorry, I'm trying to get it in the little camera so you can see it there. And then taking it and then just flipping it over to line up on that side right there. Just kind of moving it down, still in line with its first row, and then just giving it a pin, okay? And that, to me, looks pretty darn good. Okay. All right, well, we could do, try it out. What's up, Munchkin? He's on the steps and I can hear him. Hello? Nope, not on the steps anymore. <clears throat> I'm just keep flipping and flopping to make sure it's lined up. One little shift is, is just enough to drive you crazy. It's looking pretty good. All I can do is hope. Hope and do some pin it. Come here, you. <clears throat> alcohol, what? <laughs> Measurements of alcohol? <laughs> All right. Like I said, don't stretch anything. Don't tug anything. I just plop in a couple of pins, pin your way down, match up at the bottom. See, he was almost laying right on top of each other right there. Make sure these like little seams here are lined up. To me, that's the only thing I can think of to make sure you're, you're doing it accurate as, as, as possible, right? You know, that looks pretty good. This is not really even a lineup. It's just a little bit beforehand. So, all right. Let's pin a couple of these and then see how it goes. I guess I like do a little faux sewing and see if it looks like something you're, you're wanting to use. If not, see my first best friend today and every day. <laughs> okay, it looks like it's matching up pretty good. So I pop a few more pins in here. You can never have too many pins. You're the one who has to take them out, so. All right. Now, I'm holding it up. <clears throat> And then I think to myself, okay, is that, is that going to be okay? Is that going to sit right the way I want those little seams to go? Looks like they're lining up-ish. You know? Yeah. Give it a shot. Of course, if you didn't have the white sashing, you could line up those seams right up to get to. So, you know, of course, that would be uh, an easier uh, task but I really wanted that little pop of white to go in between all those blues. So, and like I said, I did, I even contemplated putting uh, white sashing in between these rows, but I think it needed to be a bigger parallelogram for that uh, little white sashing to kind of pop out, you know what I mean? Hello, Margaret. <laughs> Happy you're here. Happy everybody's here. Because I wasn't too concerned about the little taily wheelies hanging out. Mate, meant no matter to me. 
Remember, no tugging, no yanking, just letting it sit rest against each other and stitching on down. Quarter inch seam allowance. What's up, Mr. Clive? Hmm? What you doing? What you doing, meowsers? Uh oh, here comes Lofi. Because I'm paying too much attention to the cat. <laughs> right, Pope? Eh? Right, Popey Lopes? <laughs> come to the other side. At least they can see your happy butt. Yeah, come over here. There we go. At least they can see your happy butt. There you go. Come on, there we go. Hi. <laughs> What you doing? What's up, my little lopesy popsies? <coughs> hmm? What's up, my little lopesy popsies? And the cat tail, and the dog tail, everybody's tail. It's party at Mama's sewing machine. Woohoo! <laughs> so, if you're from Germany, then you would know Schiffenhausen in Switzerland. Yes, I did a, a little art project on my long arm. Did a little scenic picture I found on the web and stitched it out. It was for my girlfriend's dad for his 70th birthday and he loved it. Absolutely loves it. Hangs proudly in his house. Which makes me very happy. Even with the original spelling mistake. <laughs> but then fixed. Do, 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 do. All right, so here's hoping this is lined up half decently, and I don't have to just seam rip the whole row right out. <coughs> out. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh dear. Okay, here, let's go. Let's give this a little bit of a press and see what it looks like. Let's move this one off to the side here. I think it looks pretty good, wouldn't you say? Looks pretty good. Looks pretty lined up. I think I'm kind of happy with that. So we'll give it a press. Lined up pretty nicely here. It's not way off. Could be worse. I know that's when you want to tweak it. I think everybody kind of lined up okay. So, I think we'll give it a press, <clears throat> and that's row two. And I like how it's coming together. You know, when you get a vision in your mind, and you're really not quite sure how it's going to work out, you know, this, this to me is very encouraging. I like that little pop of white in between. Like I said, I picked a good white, a North Cot, 100% cotton, uh, not a flimsy white, not a broadcloth or like a top sheet or anything like that. It's a good sturdy cotton because I have such a small tiny strip of it. I really wanted it to be um, a, 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 a nice accent and not fall apart later on, right? So with being such a small piece. So what you visually see is only a, a half inch of white amongst the, you know, three and... Uh, 11 16th or and then the four by 15 16th or something like that I'll read it off again very nice very nice I'm happy with that very happy okay so that's row one and two what do we think oh it is looking like an air feather I can see it in the big camera and I love it Oh, it's my new quilting sash for quilter of 2018. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> actually make a great bag, too, when you think of it. That'd make a nice little bag. Should we go on this way? Love it. All right. So that's 50. There's 50 parallelograms right there. 
And I think, I don't know, what do you think? Should we, should we give myself a bit of a challenge and actually do the border uh, this way? Like, or should I chop it off and actually put like another sashing? Or should I try and maybe put, I don't know. We'll think on it. We'll see how it gets, when it gets bigger. So how many rows? I'm not sure. If 50's two, I was looking at doing 500. So what is that? That's what, 16, 20? Is that 20 rows? Something like that? Yeah, so that'd be 20 rows. So yeah, I could either chop it right across there or do something funky and fancy. I don't know. We'll figure it out. All right, I think we're going to end it there. And I want to thank everybody who came out today to see this, the beautiful start of the scrappy blues quilt. Um, and I'm, I'm really, really liking how it's coming together. So I'm progressively, it's going to go from lighter tones of the blues to darker tones. And hopefully, hopefully it works out in my mind. I'm glad I, um, I saved some of the cutting for with you guys, or I would have learned that mistake on my own off camera. And I'm kind of glad I learned it with you. So we can, it's not like I wasted any fabric. I have lots now for this side and need to cut more for this side. So none of it's going to go to waste. It'll all get used. I'm very happy with the way it has turned out for sure. There we go. So that's row one and two. And we're going to have quite a few more. Yeah, let's put this up here. There we go. There. Beautiful. All sorts of shades of blues. All right. Have a great day, everybody. And we'll see you on uh, Wednesday for the last of the girls' charity quilts. There's all three of them getting all quilted up. And, uh, and uh, stay tuned for that, okay? So take care, everybody. Have a fantastic Sunday. And thanks for showing up for the live stream. Big hugs. Take care. Enjoy yourself. I need to cut the other side of this. <laughs>